Uh, is it the government's plan to plow ahead with an election in Toronto despite today's decision, with Bill 5 still being appealed and the chaos around, around Toronto's election process certain to continue? Deputy Premier. To the Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing. Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, uh, thank you, Speaker. Uh, to you, to uh, the Leader of the Opposition, uh, we're pleased that the Court of Appeal has granted this stay. This, uh, this will allow the City Clerk to go forward with a 25-ward election that is aligned with uh, federal and provincial boundaries. It's a very positive result for the people of Toronto. And I ask, uh, through you, Speaker, to uh, the Leader of the Opposition, let's, let's, let's stop the political games. Let's move forward on an effective and efficient City Council for 25 years. Thank you. Stop the clock. Start the clock. Supplementary. Uh, back to the uh, Deputy Premier Speaker. This falls into the cat category of just because you can doesn't mean you should. After never mentioning it once on the campaign trail, the Premier decided to rewrite the rules for municipal elections that were already underway, throwing municipal elections into chaos and trampling people's basic rights. Now. Many doubt, at this point in time, that free and fair elections can actually be conducted in the City of Toronto, and the courts have, have yet to give their final determination because now the appeal is stayed. But the government continues to plow ahead. Is that what constitutes success in Doug Ford's Ontario? <laughs> Once again, I will ask the Leader of the Opposition to refer to the Premier as the Premier, not by his personal name. Response? Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing. Again, Speaker, the, through you to the Leader of the Opposition, this is, a very, this is a very positive result for the citizens of Toronto. We can now, on October 22nd, have an effective 25-person council that can make those important decisions, decisions that our government has talked about numerous times in this House, things like transit and infrastructure and housing. After October 22nd, we look forward to working with Toronto's next mayor and council here, here. and deliver on those priorities here, here. to Toronto. Well, let's let's not forget that the appeal, the appeal has not actually been decided. Many doubt that Toronto can now hold a fair election or whether it will be legally valid. Canada has a history Order. of Canada has a history as a democracy of holding free and fair elections, but the Premier seems happy to roll the dice, proceed with an election, and let the chips fall where they may. Is that the sort of history the Deputy Premier wants to make? Minister. Uh, again, uh, Speaker, through you to the Leader of the Opposition. I, uh, the court found, and I'm going to, I'm going to read the, uh, court's de uh, some of the court's decision. We have concluded. This is this is the court's decision. We have concluded that there is a strong likelihood that application judge erred in law, and that the attorney general's appeal to this court will succeed. It is not in the public interest to permit the impending election to proceed on the basis of a dubious ruling that invalidates legislation. <laughs> Again, through you to the Leader of the Opposition, we are committed to working with the City of Toronto Bonds. and the Clerk's Office to have a 25-person council after October 22nd that we can work with. That's what we're doing. Start the clock. Next question, Leader of the Opposition. Uh, thanks, Mr. Speaker. My next question is also for the Deputy Premier. 
Uh, we know that the Premier has been obsessed with proving that he can do this. He's talked endlessly about his old enemies at to his old job at City Hall. He literally barricaded himself inside the Legislature in the dead of night while citizens were locked outside. He spent untold sums Order. fighting in Government the courts side. and Order. keeping staff here at all hours. But the question has never been whether he could do it. It was whether he should do it. Did the Deputy Premier really get into public life to help the Premier execute his petty vendettas at all costs? Yeah. I'm going to ask the member to withdraw. Withdraw, Speaker. Next question, or rather, response. Apologize. Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing. Minister of Municipal Affairs. Again, Speaker, uh, through you to the Leader of the Opposition, she, she wants to talk about freedom of expression. I'm actually going to quote from uh, uh, the court decision today uh, where they mentioned that uh, particular uh, fact. Here's the quote. While the change brought about by Bill 5 is undoubtedly frustrating for candidates who started campaigning in May 2018, we are not persuaded that their frustration amounts to a substantial interference with their freedom of expression. Exactly. Again, Speaker, we oh. have made the Bill 5, and now, with, because of the decision today, it will finally allow us to move forward and provide that certainty that our government has always wanted for the October 22nd, a certainty where those 25 wars Response. will cover those municipal councillors just like they cover provincial politicians in this House or federal politicians. It's the same boundaries. It's going to provide that efficient. Thank you. Supplementary. Speaker, we've, um, we've all been sent here to do important work for families, and when we debate bills, we're supposed to ask the tough questions, whether the policy is effective, whether it will help people, people whether it's a good idea. Unfortunately, unfortunately, the standard of this government seems to be, can we get away with this? Ontario families are facing challenging times. Does the Pre Deputy Premier think that that's good enough? Response, Minister. Uh, again, Speaker. Uh, through you to the Leader of the Opposition. Again, I'm, I'm going to again quote the court. The court said the candidates were and are still free to say what they want to say to vote to the voters. The inconvenience candidates will experience because of the change from 47 to 25 wards does not prevent or impede them from saying Absolutely. what they said. want to say about the issues arising in the election. Again, Speaker, I want to emphasize to the Leader of the Opposition, let's put aside these political games. Let's work together with that new council. Shocked that somehow the minister thinks question period is a political game speaker. It's actually our duty to hold the government to account. Families need shorter hospital wait times, speaker. They need safe schools and good jobs. They're looking to the government to focus on those priorities and deliver for them. Instead, they see a, a premier focused on former enemies and ancient grudges who won't lift a finger to help a working mom on minimum wage, but will move heaven and earth to eliminate the political opponents at City Hall. The deputy premier and her fellow all-stars know that this has been a wasteful debate on bad policy. At what point will she and her fellow caucus members tell the premier to get his priorities straight? Minister. Speaker, to the Leader of the Opposition, again, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep reading her these quotes because she needs to understand the importance of what happened this morning. The Ontario Court of Appeals said, given our tentative conclusion that Bill 5 does not suffer from constitution infirmity, we have no hesitation in finding that the balance of convenience favours granting a stay. Speaker, we're here today, and I again commit to the Clerk of the City of Toronto. We're going to work with you. We're going to work with you under this uh, ruling this morning uh, to have that 25 council election and to be able to, on October 22nd, work with that 
uh, mayor and council on the important issues for Transoria. <laughs> Thank you. Next question, the Leader of the Opposition. Uh, thank you, Speaker. My next uh, question is for the Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing, who needs to know that an appeal is still ongoing. It's just been stayed at this moment. Uh, Bill 5 was introduced by the Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing on July 30th, but the Minister says that there are— Order on Bill the 5 was side. introduced— by, by the Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing on July 30th, but the ministry says that there are no records of the minister being told to draft the bill. But I'm guessing it didn't appear by magic. So did the All-Star Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing draft Bill 5? Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing. Again, Speaker, through you to the Leader of the Opposition, again, this is just more political games from political the Opposition games. who continually stands up for— Opposition benches come to order. I, I, I didn't do a Freedom of Information uh, on the NDP to find out if, if they ever use the words efficient and effective local government. I think I know there'd be no responsive records to that either. <laughs> Supplementary. Being Toronto Council wasn't in the throne speech. It wasn't in the PC platform. Not that there was even a PC platform. Uh, but someone told government lawyers to draft Bill 5. We asked through FOI whether the minister was told to do it. And the response was that there was no record of the minister being told to draft Bill 5. No description of what was to be done. No memo telling the minister to cancel some regional chairs elections, but not other regional chairs elections. Was the All-Star Minister Minister warming the bench while the bill was being drafted? <laughs> Minister. Uh, again, Speaker, uh, I'm, I'm going to use very parliamentary language. I'm not going to talk about her campaign during the last election. Well, We're going to talk about what the Premier and there many of us rodeo. spoke about every day in the candidate in the campaign, and that's about reducing the size and cost. The fact of the matter is, Speaker, she can say all she wants, but Bill 5 is going to provide that effective and efficient and streamlined council that on, on election day, the day after the election, will be there to work with our government on those important issues. Here, here. That's the bottom line, Speaker. 